A couple videos I've made in the past compared different models and quality levels of diesels and HO scale. So for this video, I thought I'd compare some of the more affordable steam engine options in HO. So all the ones shown in this video, even though they're varying levels of quality, um, I tend to see them for similar prices at train shows and online. So that's why I picked these out for this video. So over here, we've got a lifelike 260 also sold by Model Power, a River Aussie 240, a Tyco 060 model, and then an IHC 260. I'll start with the lifelike model here. This is a 260 steam engine made for them by Playart, and that's why it was also sold under the Model Power name, because it was imported. So this is obviously a European steam engine. I believe the shell was originally made by Fleischmann or Marklin. I can't remember which of the two. But they paired it with an American tender, Pennsylvania Railroad, to sell as part of an American train set. So some of the design decisions in here weren't bad. I mean, it's got a good sized motor that's, even though it's cheap, it's smooth running, quiet, pretty powerful. The axles have their own bearings and everything, which would help to reduce wear on the whole mechanism, but the manufacturing of the thing was a little too sloppy. Like, you can see just how much slop there is in the wheels there moving back and forth. It's not a tight system at all, so it kind of results in some jerky running qualities. And one problem that I've seen with every single one of these I've encountered is that the middle axle gear has a tendency to split, causing the model to no longer work. That gear isn't really hard to replace though. I did it on this one, put in a brass gear that I had on hand that got it working. And here is how it runs. Makes some noise. Makes a lot of noise. <laughs> I've done all the tuning I possibly can with this thing. And just found that I really can't do much more to get it working real smoothly. Radiological panel. There's even though electrical pickup is with all six of the drive wheels, it has a tendency to lose power there. And oddly enough, it runs smoother in reverse than it does forward, and I can't figure out why. So, these steam engines, they're not, a, not particularly well built, but they are repairable pretty easily to at least get working again, so it's not really one that I'd recommend picking up when you see it, but if you already have one, or if it's just something you had a long time ago and want to get it for sentimental value, it is a repairable model. And now we'll move on to the River Aussie. So this one here is their uh, 240 type steam engine, the Bowker. Um, there were about three or four different versions of this steam engine. This is actually the um, best version here because it has the most uh, separate brass detail as well as the uh, um, large can motor in the tender. Later versions of this had the motor placed in the cab instead, so it completely filled that. And then the tender's metal wheels were replaced with plastic ones, so it would only be these four, or possibly that one, one of those two, but I think just these four with electrical pickup. So River Aussie made a lot of different steam engines of all different levels of quality. Some of them could be a bit hit or miss, but I've generally found that um, even the lesser ones can be pretty good runners with some tuning. And... This one is a very good example of how they can run. Of course, the three-pull motor doesn't always have the smoothest takeoff or low speed, but it is a quiet, smooth runner with a decent amount of power. That's full speed. So yeah, in addition to the uh, 
um, pretty smooth running can motors. These also have all metal gearing. River Rossi always used metal gears for their engines, no matter what the level of quality was, which I appreciate. And they're um, helically cut to match the shape of the worm, which also helps with smooth running and making them a bit quieter. Um, this one has traction tires on it. The later versions did not, since they had to free these up for electrical pickup. So this one's got a bit more traction than some of the others. One problem with Riverossis is that they tend to be kind of lightweight because of their mostly plastic construction. This one doesn't really weigh much and it kind of needs those tires in, able, in order to pull anything. So ones without tires have very little traction. Even so, overall, Riverossi for a budget steam engine is one of the brands that I recommend looking to. Um, sometimes they just take a bit of tuning to run smoothly, but as long as you can do that, you can get yourself a pretty good steam engine from them. And now we'll move on to the Tyco 060 here. This may be one that a lot of you aren't quite familiar with, as much as the uh, Chattanooga, which had the tender drive and the power torque motor in there. This one, um, most of the Tyco 060s actually have a metal body and the Pittman style motor, and they're pretty good steam engines. But this one here actually has a plastic body based on the metal one. And then the drive chassis is actually a power torque motor going to all three of the axles here. So this is the only rod on each side. And these wheel centers are just plastic and really there for looks is all. So there's no um, need for actual quartering between these aside from making it look a little better. And of course it runs like anything else with the power torque drive. And one little problem with these is those plastic wheel centers can pop out from here. So I actually, I have the two that are missing from here. I just need to glue them back in. Now, since the motor and chassis is all metal, um, it's actually got a fairly reliable electrical pickup and a decent amount of weight for its size. But the problem with it, of course, is the power torque drive, which is hit or miss on its running consistency. This one's a bit of a mess. I could fix that with a better armature. No real slow speed control to speak of. You can kind of get it at an okay speed with some work. But once you crank it up to full, it really gets going fast. You can't seem to hold a consistent speed. And I'm pretty sure that that problem is the armature. I don't think that these were made for long. And it can lose its electrical connection on switches, of course, but uh, yeah, some metal wheels and wires from the tender could fix that. And of course, those are easily replaceable, just snapped in. Add maybe wiper to each truck so you can get an extra four wheels. That's a pretty easy wiring job there. Replace the horn hook couplers with the drawbar. So it's another kind of cheap model, not exactly a good one. So again, not one that I would exactly recommend picking up. But if you find the all-metal version with the Pittman-style motor, then those are very good steam engines, and I definitely recommend getting them if you can get a good price on them. Speaking of which, here's one of them now. And I wasn't actually planning to put this one in here, but I might as well have it just so you have a little comparison. So the body on the Plastic 060 I think is actually based on their um, 040 steam engine because there are some slight differences. It's the same size, but you can see a little bit of difference in the dome placement and, of course, the headlight. And these metal steam engines really are some pretty good runners. Takes off nice and smooth. I've actually put a neodymium magnet in this one to power it up a bit, but even before that, it was a good runner. A bit noisy. 
but you tune these things right and they'll last forever. And the last one here is the IHC260. These are made by Mahano, who's actually a pretty old manufacturer for HO scale trains. They've been making them at least since the 60s. And they tend to be pretty good runners and value for what you pay. Um, sold under the IHC brand, they were always low cost, but smooth runners that are reliable. This one needs a little bit of oil. There's a little squeak in there. But they have three pull motors, usually made by Mabuchi. The gearing isn't always uh, low speed either, so they're not always that great for switching duties, but for just for just for general running, they do a very good job. These are made mostly from plastic. Usually the only metal is just for electrical parts or the weights inside. Sometimes you'll get a metal detail like the handrail here, but generally most of the parts will be plastic. So a little heavier looking, usually kind of shiny because they tend to be molded in color, but they're good looking steam engines, good runners, and they made a lot of them, so usually you can find them for a decent value. So that's all we'll be looking at for this video. And in my opinion, starting from worst and going to best, the lifelike play art here one, um, because of the split gear issues and sloppy construction, it's definitely one I would recommend avoiding, like I mentioned before. And then next up would be this uh, Tyco one here with the power torque drive. Um, if you get a Tyco, you definitely want to look for the ones that are made from metal and have the Pittman style motor because those are very good. But for these cheaper plastic train set, train set type ones, again, it's kind of one you want to avoid, although they can be tuned, they can be fixed. It's not really a great one. Riverasi, they can be a bit hit or miss on their quality especially at the lower end, but again, they can be tuned up pretty well and end up being some very smooth runners. And then IHC here, I'd say is the best. The Mahano made engines, they tend to be pretty consistent with their quality. They're good runners and definitely a very good value.